Welcome to the Marmalade Partner webinar series. I'm Steph Jorgel, the head of Americas for Marmalade, and I'll be your host for this series. The Marmalade Partner webinar series is designed to share thought leadership trends and tips around the services and integrations that work with the Marmalade Cross-Platform Game Development, SDK, and features partners Flurry, Fortumo, Hass Offers, Payment Wall, Exit Games, GameHouse, and others. We'll start off with 45 minutes of presentation today, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A. Feel free to post your questions during the presentation in the lower left part of the screen. We will address these questions just following the presentation. Today's guest speaker is Jacob Hoskins, the VP of BizDev for, for Chumu. And he's going to share tips with you today on how to make more revenue on Android. Jacob? Um, yeah, so what we're going to do today is go through uh, just a very quick, brief bit of propaganda to make my boss happy. And then we're going to really dive into the meat of it, which is teaching and hopefully some, some tricks that we've learned from working with uh, many, many different merchants around the world that have been successfully making money off of Android uh, IAP, predominantly in emerging markets. So that's our knowledge base. Uh, we are a European company uh, founded there. I'm based in San Francisco, but the headquarters is in Estonia. And so we have a very worldly perspective as far as how you can go out and make money in emerging markets. Then we're going to get on to the talking about a promotion we're doing. Uh, the special for webinar participants. Uh, go over questions about the top part of the agenda. And then at the end, we're going to talk about integration and go over any integration questions you have after that. So what is Fortumo? Uh, Fortumo is uh, we're the most popular emerging markets payment method using carrier billing. Uh, we work on all platforms, so not just Android, even though that'll be the, the focus of today's talk. So we work on Windows as well as web. Uh, about the only place that doesn't allow carrier billing is iOS. Uh, you know, and you can take that to Apple's policies. And our platform also allows it so that anybody can come and sign up. And it's very easy, very self-serve, uh, very developer focused. Uh, we have working with over 80,000 different developers currently. Uh, the APIs that we use have been around for about four years. Uh, we were one of the leaders in uh, Android in-app payments back before it was uh, the thing to do. Our coverage, as you can see here, is the 80 countries that we cover. A very good coverage in the Americas, Asia, Southeast Asia, as well as Eastern Europe, as well as we're always adding coverage in uh, Middle East and North Africa, along with India as, as a recent addition to us. Some of the brands we work with are some of the very largest, as you can uh, see on the slide here, you know, EAs, Rovios, Badoos of the world, as well as the many, many smaller developers that have uh, very innovative products. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this chart was produced by our friends at Flurry, and the yellow areas are showing where the high growth areas are. So these are areas that are growing at over 100% per year. As you can see, most of the high growth areas are in Asia, so Russia, China, India, as well as Latin America and parts of Africa. Uh, the developed markets, uh, you know, U.S., Western Europe, are you know growing at less than 100% per year as far as connected devices. So we really focus on the areas that are going to make you the most money in the coming years, as well as a side benefit of that is that the CPIs are substantially lower in emerging markets than they are in developed markets. So it's a great place to go and get a good return on your, your marketing investment and time investment just because it's less crowded. You know, it's very difficult to be featured in the US uh, on any of the, you know, Google or Apple just because the competition's fierce uh, and the ad spends are pretty high. Versus in emerging markets, if you have something that's innovative and, and localized, it's much easier to get to the top of the charts where you get a lot of self-promotion um, uh, without cost. The biggest question that we always get uh, about emerging markets is, yeah, there's a lot of them. They have a lot of devices, but they have a reputation uh, for not paying, you know, not paying for content, that they have, are addicted to free content. But I think that the data we collect, and this is our proprietary data. Uh, this is not from any third-party service. This is what runs through our servers every day shows that in certain emerging markets, uh, the average revenue per paying user is actually much higher than in the US. Uh, so in the US, I, you know, according to our customer base, um, the average revenue in, back in June was almost eight bucks versus in even countries like Romania, Turkey, and Thailand, it was two times higher. 
so you're looking at areas where these young people predominantly spend most of their kind of entertainment dollars on apps. So they're not, you know, taking girls out to the movies. They're not, you know, buying Xbox One games. They're using games on their mobile phone because it's an affordable luxury for them. And they'll absolutely pay if they see value. So I'll get to a little bit later in the presentation on how you can make it easy for them to see value and pay. But the key takeaway here is that when they see value, they'll pay for it. And the developers that focus on that can be very richly rewarded. Um, most of the money uh, made in apps is made outside of the US. Uh, you know, I'm based out of San Francisco and you know, people around the Bay Area are fairly Bay Area centric, let's say. Uh, I can say that because I live there. But most of the money you see here on this chart is actually made in you know, Europe, Asia Pacific, and even in the emerging markets like Middle East and Latin America, it's growing very quickly. And that's gonna even accelerate as you see the proportion of low-end smartphones take over from the feature phones. And that transition is happening very rapidly. And I'll get to that a little bit later in the presentation. But the dollar numbers you're looking at here are you know, billions, tens of billions of dollar market that you can attack outside of the US. This is the emerging markets revenue equation. Uh, I, I bring this up to your attention just because everybody's very familiar with how you go about making money on Google Play and in your traditional revenue equation. But this is what we've modified to really help ourselves as well as our customers think about how to go maximize your bucks uh, in emerging markets. First thing you have to think about is your distribution. You just can't upload it to Google Play and say you're done. Uh, that's, that's a very unsuccessful strategy. Next thing you need to do is modify or design your game to drive the maximum number of users to hit your pay point. So if the pay point's a new level or a better sort or even getting rid of advertising, uh, you need to make sure to design a game and content that's compelling as well as accessible. Then the third factor is payment conversion rate. You know, in the US, you know, I have three credit cards. I don't even want to know how many my wife has. You know, it's, it's taken for granted that everybody has one. But in emerging markets, most people do not. So there's on the order of 1.5 billion credit cards out there versus 5 billion people or 5 billion cell phones out there. So you can see that you're missing audience of about 3 billion when you just look at cell phones. I'm sorry, credit cards. Uh, then the kind of downside of it is transaction costs. You know, doing everything in emerging markets is also more expensive. Uh, and so there's definitely a balance to be paid. So you know, the credit card fees, 5%. Uh, carrier fees are substantially higher. But I'll walk through later in the presentation. You can kind of see the, the yin and the yang and how it balances out and how you can maximize your money by keeping track of where to put your effort. Distribution. So where's the money at? This is going to be a breakdown of the prior bar chart that I showed you. And I'll walk through some specific markets for you, as well as some specific distribution that hits those markets. So we have to broaden our minds beyond Google Play. Uh, when we work with our merchants at Fortumo, we help them distribute to over 30 different app stores, uh, a selection of which I, I threw up the logos on the screen, as well as the carriers have you know, app stores where they, in, as well as the OEM, that distribute. Uh, depending upon the specific market, uh, so in markets where the carriers are very strong and buy a lot of phones, the carrier gets to say how it's going to be and puts their app store on the phones. In markets where the carriers are smaller or weaker, generally the OEM app store goes on the phone. So it can be market specific. Uh, it's not just like the U.S. where, you know, I don't think just about any OEM can tell Verizon what the software load is going to look like. In emerging markets, you have a lot more levers to be pulling in order to get distribution. First market we take a look at is Latin America. Uh, Brazil is the fastest growing market down there. Uh, it's about half of the overall uh, opportunity in Latin America. And especially here, you can see it's going to accelerate a lot next year. I was at talks uh, at CES recently with a number of Brazilian carriers, and they were telling me about the plans where they're going to be rolling over their uh, premium uh, phone users and into smartphone users. And these are low-end smartphones, but they're looking for the market to be predominantly smartphone within the next one to two years. So it's not going to be a three or four year transition. This is happening fast. And these users are going to be looking for new apps. So I think that this is, to me, is going to be one of the fastest growing markets in the next couple of years and a very good place to invest. Uh, Middle East, Turkey, I'm flagging up as a, a great market to pay attention to. 
you know, it has language barriers, which keep a lot of less enterprising developers out. Um, but it also has the highest average revenue per user in the world, according to our data set. Uh, these are predominantly young men, late teens, 20s, uh, who spend a heck of a lot on in-app purchases. They're you know, addicted to gaming. They love it. Uh, they do it continuously. So if you make apps target the right demographic there, uh, you can make a lot of money. Uh, that also tends to be a younger market. So unlike the U.S., where you might be getting uh, somewhat older players, uh, in Turkey, it very, makes sense to very squarely target on the teenage male as well as 20-year-old male. So you can see the types of games that they play. They're not you know, whimsical puzzle games. These are much more you know, mid to harder core gaming for them, as well as you know, social services, dating, chatting, stuff like that. Uh, in uh, Central Eastern Europe, uh, market flag up is Russia. Russia is a really cool market just because it's uh, not just a country market. It is a second language market. So you're capturing over uh, 250 million Russian speakers uh, who have it as their first or second language. So you get a nice bump in a lot of the CIS states that the users can use uh, Russian to per buy stuff and feel comfortable operating in. Also, you probably have noticed on your own download charts, Russians have a ton of downloads. Um, depending upon the store and the day, they're in the top four to six, seven type downloads that you're going to see. The problem with Russians is that they don't particularly like banks uh, due to a variety of historical factors, uh, but they do pay for their cell phones. So cellular billing there is very advanced. And amongst uh, developing countries, uh, uh, carriers in Russia actually give some of the best rates because it's a very commonly used technology. Very easy, people expect to use it. Another interesting fact, a side note from the Android conversation here is that Windows Phone is beating uh, iOS in Russia. So the second ecosystem there would be Windows. So if you happen to have a Windows side project, Russian is not a bad language to translate it into. Asia, I uh, can't talk about Asia without talking about China. It is the, um, you know, going to be the by far the biggest market for digital goods. It's very, very fragmented though. So it's tough to do business there. They have, you know, 20, 25 very important app stores there that each do a ton of business. But the trick there is, you know, you have a lot of licensing issues and getting to do business in China. Anybody who does business in China, the first thing that uh, we always say is it's complicated. Um, so it's not just a kick down the door, go turn on your app and you're there. Uh, it's more complicated, uh, but we do help our merchants uh, access that market due to kind of using our local office. So we have a Beijing office there that specializes in getting games into China. And I would highly uh, recommend if you're going to uh, either use us or someone else working with somebody who has a local office there, just because it's not the easiest place for foreigners to do business. Driving users to hit a pay point. So there's you know, obviously cool games and great content uh, that you create, but there's some very specific things you need to keep in mind um, when dealing with emerging markets that are different than you know, trying to get your average American or Western European to pay for something. First thing is localization. I hinted at that earlier, but globally only 10% of people speak English. And so to access a much broader market, you know, we always encourage our clients to translate their games into Spanish, uh, Portuguese, Arabic, Russian, Chinese, as some of the early languages to go about and try um, to go grab the majority of the money with a minimum amount of work. And then if you are more adventuresome, you can also translate into things like Turkish to go after that more fragmented market and really take those higher uh, average revenue per users. This is pretty obvious, but it's even more so when you're dealing with foreign languages is less text is more universal. Uh, it does two things. So it makes it easier and more fun to pick up. Um, I have kids that uh, are not yet reading, uh, but they can pick up some, some games and really play them well. So that to me is a, a handicap for me is I'll check it out. And if my kids can play a game, I can make a pretty good bet that that game would be doing well in emerging markets versus if it requires a lot of text or cultural understanding. Those are the games that have a harder time moving. So, you know, Rovio is one of our customers. And so we always try to think about, is this easy enough as, you know, slingshotting a pig? Uh, next one, and this is the one that the, the devs that I talked to actually have the hardest time with. The other ones I think people understand and it kind of fits with their game design philosophy. And when I say games, it also means other apps, but I'm just taking a, a shortcut. But one thing to remember is most people do not have your phone. 
So I would bet if uh, we all pulled the phones out of our pocket, we predominantly have the latest and greatest. Uh, you know, my wife has a, a two generation ago Apple and, you know, that is a very slow phone for you know, the Bay Area versus an emerging market that's probably you know, it's Apple, but it's a much faster phone than you'd expect. So if you want to make the most money there, you need to make sure that the games that and apps that you're writing to work on a phone that costs 150 bucks. As well as you need to make sure that the phones that or the games that you're making don't require continuous uh, connectivity to play, uh, just because in a lot of those places connectivity is more intermittent. Um, also, the connectivity is slower, so they can't go home and have a you know cable modem to their house with really fast Wi-Fi to download a 300 megabyte awesome game. Uh, they're going to do it over the air. So these games need to be less than 50 megabytes. Uh, that also happens to be the limit on many of the app stores that we help with distribution to. So I think smaller is better and having less gra graphically intensive is also better. You know, I know it reduces the cool factor, but it will more than compensate on the money factor. Uh, the payment conversion rate. This is an area that we take for granted a lot of times just because you know, we assume that everybody has a credit card because we have one. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, over 3 billion people in emerging markets uh, that could be your customers don't have credit cards. So by making that assumption, you're really going to be crushing your conversion rate. And as you can see here, we've seen ranges uh, anywhere from a 5%. So these are people that actually hit a paywall and then, you know, act, transact. So these, you know, there's a variety of credit card processors out there, um, but that you'd be lucky to get 5% of people who hit your credit card page actually pay you money on our one-click implementations here. So you can see here, rather than having to type a lot of information in, you know, on a smartphone, it's painful to type in your credit card number, your name, your address, you know, all sorts of extra information that you may not have with you at the time. Versus if you use a more advanced uh, kind of integration like we have, uh, you get closer to one-click. So this is, you know, Amazon easy, one-click and buy. Uh, depending upon the region, sometimes you have to have a confirmation screen but it's very fast and it's very fluid. Uh, users are used to doing it. And we see conversion rates, uh, the, hit pay, the paywall, as high as 50%. So you're gonna make a lot more money off of your users because they're actually paying you rather than looking at your paywall and, and abandoning. It's another important lesson is don't try to have one worldwide price. Um, I talked to a lot of guys who said, I did a lot of testing and the best price for this is 299. Okay, that might be true in one territory, but the spending power across the world is, is very different. Uh, so we would highly encourage you to vary your prices based on country and work with a provider that can do that. You know, self-plug, uh, that's a key part of our platform is being able to charge the Brazilians uh, less just because they're more price elastic. So if you cut the price, they'll sell a lot more versus if you were to say uh, price in Turkey, you can raise your prices there. They're prepared to pay for you know, quality content. So you can have a different pricing strategy to maximize your money of less price in Brazil, more in Turkey. And then we can also help provide guidance in other areas around where they are on the pricing spectrum. So it takes money to make money with transaction costs. You know, the transaction costs have been coming down around the world, but carrier billing is definitely a more expensive way to go than versus a credit card. And I'll walk you through some of the examples of that. Uh, so credit cards, as you can see here, about a billion and a half people have them. Uh, average commission, let's say it's 5% or so. Um, the fees are relatively low. You have flexible pricing. So if you want to make, you know, your great level cost 825 in one country, that's fine. Um, but the problem is that you have uh, low conversion rates. You have chargebacks. You have bad debt, as well as you have fraud because you have card not present situations. Uh, so all those things kind of combine to really bite you on the conversion side, but it makes the transaction cost side look good. Mobile payments, uh, it's the opposite story. So you have great reach, uh, 5 billion people. The commission you pay to the carriers uh, for utilizing their billing systems ranges, depending upon the territory, roughly between 15 and 50%. Uh, but because you have such great reach and the conversion is so easy, you make up for it. Uh, the other limitation of carrier billing is you have a finite number of price points depending upon country. So, you know, in the U.S. to put it in U.S. terms, you know, you have your 99, your 199, your 299, and maybe your 499, but you can't just say I want a price at 337. 
uh, you need to take a variety of price points that they present you. Again, uh, you can make your money by altering your prices, but it's just not as granular as you could get with some other uh, technologies. E-wallets, um, they have a reach about a billion. Of that billion, about 100, of, 100 million of that is PayPal, 700 of it's Alipay uh, with the Alipay of China. And the remainder of it is you know, other smaller services around the world. They take on average about 10%. Uh, you also get flexible pricing. However, it requires that your customer has a PayPal account, uh, remembers their password and uses it enough and wants to use it with your service. So you're suffering much more on the reach side of it. Uh, and outside of, let's say, the US and China, it, it gets a little sparse. This is an example. Um, you know, I am not a, a technical guy by training. I'm, I'm a finance guy. So I'd always like to see, you know, Jake, you've been talking about all these different factors. You know, how does it sort of stack out and you know, what's the so what of this? So made an example for you uh, based on some, you know, a prototypical type app that we work with. Um, you know, it's a moderately successful app. It's not uh, Candy Crush awesome, but it also, you know, has more than 37 downloads. So taking this example, um, if you distribute to alternative app stores, plus a good, do a good job of social promotion, let's say you get 2 million downloads. Um, if you were to use mobile billing, you also gain access to the carrier's app stores. So of the Telefonicas of the world, the Vodafones of the world, you get to put your app there. And the difference there is that those app stores have hundreds or thousands of apps, not millions of apps. So it's much easier to be discovered as well as featured. So your download count uh, is higher. Hitting a pay point, you should be doing the same um, good design around having smaller file sizes that people can actually download and use, uh, designing with the right language, making it simple. So assuming a 20% of people actually hit your pay point. The payment conversion, uh, here we're using the credit card, so the 5% that I mentioned earlier, uh, versus the 50% that you'll get with a one click, because it's so easy, uh, people will actually buy it while they're still excited about it versus having to dig out their wallet and type a bunch of information in here. For reality check it, you can see here that the pay point time payment conversion is a typical 1%, uh, versus for ours, it's about 10%. Uh, the purchase amount, the same $5. Uh, and the cost of transaction here, the credit card wins. Uh, you're only paying $5,000 of transaction fees versus a hefty $750 for uh, the carrier billing. Uh, but as you can see here, the total difference in the revenue is a very nice car versus a very nice house. So this is how that breaks down. So it'll be painful to see the $750,000 going to the carriers, uh, but hopefully the $750 in your pocket uh, helps to offset some of your sorrow. So this is a special offer we're doing for webinar participants. Uh, I thank everybody for their time. I know everybody else uh, has things to be doing today. So as a thank you, we're uh, doing a $500 special offer where for each dollar you earn with uh, Fortumo, we're going to match it. So if you, you know, install our software in your, in your code and you make 200, we'll give you 200 bucks. If you make it 500, we'll give you 500. Uh, if you make you know, 20,000, we'll give you 20,000 plus the 500 bucks. Uh, so it's a very simple thank you uh, for your time. To get that, please go to our website. So you can either get there directly at fortumo.com or through the links that you're going to see later in the page via the Marmalade um, website, developer website. Click on sign up and in the invitation code, just put Marmalade 500 and we will uh, add that promotion to your account. You still have to integrate it and, and get the software done but that way it's enabled for you. And that promotion is good for this year. All right, I had a question come up about the 50% conversion rate not being realistic. And so that's not 50% of people that download um, because you're gonna have a lot of people that download your app that never hit your pay point. So that's not it. These are people that actually hit your pay point um, and that we are seeing that. That's based on our data. So the 50% is very, very good. And I think that also has to do with you having compelling content. But if you have the content that drives people to paywall, it is the 50%. That's the difference between one click versus filling out a credit card. I buy a lot more stuff on Amazon because of one click versus if I had to go to different sites and pull out my credit card every time. 50% uh, is market specific, um, but it covers the majority of them. I think there was a question related to um, whether in India um, that number applies as well. That is correct. India is one of the lower countries as far as conversion, so substantially better than credit cards. 
uh, it's not quite at the 50% level. I don't have the specific off the top of my head, but I do remember it was well worth. Great. And then someone had also asked about whether if they had a Fortuma account, if they could still get the offer. Yes. Okay. And is there a different process they need to go through um, when doing that? Yeah. If you're already an existing uh, Fortuma customer, please send me an email. So Jacob's email is right on the screen right now. And uh, we also have Nick uh, Smith on the line here, who's our developer relations engineer. And um, he was going to run through a few, um, just the, the basic process of using Fortuma within uh, Marmalade. So Nick, I'm going to unmute you here. Uh, my name is Nick Smith. Uh, I'm an engineer at Marmalade. Um, I work quite a lot with um, different uh, partners that we do integrations with and also with uh, games companies using us to make games. So I have quite a lot of sort of knowledge of both what we do SDK wise and what users are using us to do. Um, you've heard the sort of nice bits about money. I'm just going to go through the, the dull techie bits for a few slides. Um, so uh, one thing that's worth uh, mentioning to start off with is that there's lots of different integrations out there for Marmalade. Some of them are sort of untested things that users have made. Some of them are things that we put through our own QA um, to, to test before supplying them. Um, Fortuma is an example of a, a featured partner. So basically we're bundling the uh, Fortuma extension for Android with Marmalade SDK and also actively encouraging users to use it. So in order to get uh, Fortuma up and running, you just have to download the latest version of the SDK um, and it's already there out of the box. Um, the APIs are very similar to uh, existing uh, sort of other billing APIs you might have seen. So things like the iOS and uh, uh, Google Play Store and Amazon. Uh, notably, the Fortuma one is is actually pretty simple. You basically just have to add the uh, library in, uh, set up your app secrets and IDs, and call buy, and then respond to the payments. Uh, things you need to do to get started is you need to set up a Fortuma account and set up some uh, billing items, which are called services for Fortuma, and then just integrate the API into your code. If you've uh, got an app or a game ready to go, and you've already got a uh, billing logic in there for other platforms, then it's pretty easy to uh, switch Fortuno into that. Um, and I'm going to hopefully get some screen sharing going in a minute and just show a simple, uh, very, very simple application and how Fortuno code would be added into it. So uh, one thing to start with is uh, if you go to our website to download the SDK and then go to our docs page, there's a, an integrations page for Fortimo, um, which has a link for signing up. So you can literally click that. It'll take you straight to the page with um, the uh, the bit where you can sign up as a new user and put in the Marmalade 500 uh, promo code. Um, and once you set up, it'll take you straight to the uh, service creation screen. So you can straight away set up uh, a new service to, to pay for in your app. Uh, one thing worth noting that um, a service uh, in Fortimo is basically an item. So uh, you can set it up as a, a single item or virtual credits. And that's basically the same as sort of consumable versus non-consumable uh, products in other stores. Um, and if you want to have multiple uh, products, just set up more services. Uh, the services are just referred to by uh, an ID and uh, a name. So it's all very straightforward. There's a dashboard on the website. Uh, it lists all the services you've created. Um, once you click the uh, service name, it lists the ID and the app secrets underneath. Um, there's also at the top there you can see uh, tabs for tracking your revenue and transactions uh, and a payouts button. So at some point, you're going to want to configure um, how you get the money out of the service. So basically, it just stacks up like an account, and then you can set it to pay you back through various services, including PayPal and uh, credit card transactions and uh, I think straight uh, payments from uh, a bank account as well. So to get started with Fortuma Marmalade, download the latest SDK. Fortuma has been bundled in Marmalade since version 7, um, but we're on 7.1 at the moment, so I would recommend upgrading. Inside the SDK, there is a, a folder of extensions, and Fortuma is right there on the root there. So um, to add Fortuma to an application, you basically just have to do a sub-project Fortuma. Uh, as I said earlier, the documentation and links to Fortuma are all up on our website. Uh, there's the link there to the uh, docs page for in-app purchases, uh, which lists Fortuma and some other billing services. But Fortuma is up at the front as the uh, featured partner. Uh, you have to sign up as a Fortuma user, follow the link there, as I said. Um, and then one other thing you might need to set up is uh, a web server to handle receipt verification. I'm not going to cover that at all today, but 
Um, the same is with things like the iTunes store. Uh, if you want to actually check that um, transactions have gone through, then you can set up uh, a web server to talk to the Fortumo server. Um, basically, when uh, a user makes a purchase, uh, the Fortumo server will send a GET request to your server, and then you can then interact between the server and your game just to, to check that and possibly deliver content to the game as well if you want to send extra data. Uh, we've just sort of been through the uh, setting up a product account, but um, one nice thing is basically once you're on the Fortuna website, if you click uh, at the bottom, there's a developer button um, and it's got different guides for different integrations. There's a Marmalade guide and that will lead you through everything, including setting up the purchases on the website, uh, in adding the APIs into your game and then how to respond to uh, requests from the server for receipts. Uh, it's all very, very simple. Uh, as I said, each service is a single product, uh, set up multiple services if you need more than one product. Um, and as we saw earlier, once set up, the main screen will show you all the different IDs and secrets for the app. So just to show you how simple this is, uh, this is the in-app uh, purchases thing on the website. Click sign up now, takes to the Fatima website. If you sign up here, uh, it's basically fill in email address, password, the invitation code, uh, and it'll create an account instantly. I'll just log in with one that I earlier. And uh, basically, to create a service, just hit the Create New Service button, set up your payouts through this screen here. Uh, and I made a service earlier. I've got a couple of users set up for, for myself here. Uh, this is a test service, but you can see that's where you would get the IDs for. Um, I configured it for a couple of different countries, uh, UK and Portugal. Uh, and once you're ready to go, just hit go live. If you were... Uh, Pop back here at the bottom, there's a developers button here and clicking this will take you straight to the different guides. So Marmalade guide here will walk you straight through how to do everything. Set up exactly what we've just been through for setting a season service. And then making a payment walks you through how to set up the APIs in your app. And finally, you get receipt verification, which is how to set up your server. So whether you're using Marmalade or just plain Android or any other uh, integration, this is exactly the same thing. It's just a web server interaction with the Ultimo, uh service. So uh, to show you that in a, in a Marmalade app, um, I'm just going to pop open the Marmalade hub. So this is the regular uh, interface for Marmalade, GUI project manager. Um, can use the C++ app, and I just set up a very simple uh, My Purchase app earlier. So uh, if I open this up in the ID, it's just a very simple C++ app that renders a button that you can press to make a purchase. Nothing very exciting at all, just a bit of rendering code, an update loop, and a, a button I've created. To add Fortumo into uh, this app, because Fortumo ships with the SDK, I just have to add Fortumo as a sub-project. Uh, hit rebuild F7 here, uh, and it'll automatically pick up that I'm trying to pull in a new project in. If you go into extensions, you can see Fortumo. This has got the header file with all the different APIs that you can use. Uh, and then back in the app code, in order to pull in Fortumo, you just have to include a regular C header. So for Android, all of the, all of the, um, library integration and all that kind of stuff has all been done for you. You don't actually have to touch any of the manifest settings or anything like that. Basically include the header, use the API code and you're off. Uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here and just copy some code out I wrote earlier. So uh, a sensible thing to do is uh, you might wanna check if Fortimo is available. If you're writing an app that's gonna run on uh, lots of different platforms, where uh, the Fortumo billing service may or may not be available, then it's just a simple query of uh, Fortumo available, which I'm gonna call in the start of my app here. 
Uh, and then a useful feature is uh, a logging service, which is basically some debug information that you can do. So drop that in the start if I want to, and I would turn that on and off depending on whether I was doing a debug build. And uh, just for this app, I put in a little bit of A bit of printing for uh, whether it's found the uh, extension or not. Uh, and then to actually use for Gmo, so one thing you're going to want is uh, a callback. So like uh, many Marmalade integrations like this and most billing integrations, uh, basically you just have to set up a callback function that gets called whenever uh, the billing service responds to your app. So basically if you ask to make a purchase at some point, it will come back with a response. Uh, so response states are all very, very obvious. So pending is where it started uh, making the payment, but it hasn't finished. Um, build is the success one and failed is the failed one. And basically you're just waiting for this to come through. Uh, here's a few sort of useful examples of uh, how you might deal with the the billing not completing. So you might want to fall back onto another surface or uh, you might want to get the app to provide the data straight away, but then block the user later on, or you might want to uh, know that it's pending and just get the app to carry on with something else and then check again for the payment later. So all pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, and then the main bit, of course, is actually making a request for a payment. So uh, in my little simple example here, I've got uh, an event that happens when a button gets pressed. Uh, and basically you just, uh, create a, a request here. So basically an object that represents the payment create with this function here. Uh, and then you just set up the object based on your uh, strings from the store. So if I switch back to uh, board and go and see my product uh, service that I created earlier. Uh, you can see these things are pretty obvious. So service ID, uh, this one is just some string to display. So for example, buy my product. Let's see if I can spell properly. Uh, the in-application secret. And then the name of the product. So, uh, and that is basically it. So integration is super simple. Um, as I said, I'm not going to cover setting up a server if you want to deliver any data to your app or to have a, a verification of receipts. Um, but there's another function you would call for doing receipt verification with your own server. Um, and that's basically it. To do a build for Android, just switch to ARM for Android, hit build, and then use our deploy tool to well, that's surprising. I'm not very good usually at typing code out and building first time. Um, but then basically, same thing as you would a deploy tool, you would just pick your platform like Andrew, Android here, uh, set up a release build and build and package and get an APK uh, to ship off to your various different stores. Did any other uh, questions come up, uh, either technical for uh, Nick or simple for me? I think um, there was a question that came up. It was, uh, can you mention the top five countries that we should localize for again? That sure. was one question. Yeah. So the top countries to localize for, um, it really depends upon the app uh, and the target market you have. So, you know, there are different answers if it's a social app versus casual or versus mid-core or hardcore. So I would say that there's not probably a five for everybody. Um, you know, for example, you know, let's say you're doing a cricket app, there's very specific countries that you should market to and very specific and many, many other ones that you should not. Uh, but the regions, we think of it more on a, almost a regional basis. So the regions that you, you know, for most games would make a lot of sense would be uh, Spanish, um, Brazil, Portuguese. Um, and then I would also make sure to do Russian. Uh, the next one would probably be Arabic. They have a lot of fast growth there and then Chinese, uh, and then as well as some of the Southeast Asian languages. Um, again, they have a lot less competition, so we see a lot of developers have success in, in places like Thailand. 
Uh, the one market that I would probably say is big and juicy, but should be probably avoided by most people on the call uh, would be Japan. Uh, that is a very difficult market for uh, non-Japanese developers to make good money in. So you can, I'd, I'd probably, if you're going to you know, do a relatively hard language, uh, think more China. Um, and then if you're going to do you know, some smaller languages, you know, think about uh, Thai or Vietnamese as potential fallbacks. One question just came through. If my app is downloaded on Google Play but uses for two mode, does a Google also get a percentage of the revenue? Excellent question. Uh, we run across this all the time. And so, uh, you know, I am not your lawyer. I consult your lawyer. But uh, my understanding of Google Terms of Service are that, um, you know, it depends upon the type of thing. So if you're just selling an app where the only thing uh, that you can do in the app uh, are just kind of self-contained within Android, so, you know, by a level, do something like that. Uh, if you're a little bit broader and you could use services across multiple devices or it's kind of a digital good, and you can use across devices, that's perfectly fine. Uh, and then there's sort of, uh, you know, what Google allows versus what its uh, terms of service say. Generally, Google um, lets uh, developers use our service in areas outside of U.S. and Western Europe. Uh, that's where they make almost all their money. And so they're you know, more focused on that. And we do have a lot of our developers that use our service and distribute via Google Play. Um, and they use it and they turn it on in specific regions where Google Play does not do a good job or is banned outright. So say China or Brazil. So yes, you can do it. Uh, and Google does not get any of the revenue that comes to our system. Uh, you still do, obviously, you know, the carriers will be taking their cut uh, as the payment processor, but not Google. Definitely want to take the time to thank uh, Jacob and Nick for joining us here um, for this webinar. And uh, thanks to the uh, attendees that have um have joined us for the entire uh, presentation here. Sorry about some of the technical glitches. We've been uh, using a new service here and working through the kinks, so thanks for bearing with us. Um, if you have any questions, um, uh, you know, feel free to contact us, and um, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Steph, for uh, setting it up. Thanks very much.